So today, Dr. Scholz, we're talking about metastatic prostate cancer that has either gone to a lung or um, a spot on the lung or the liver. And so I understand that these situations happen and they tend to be rare, but for those who are in that situation, we wanted to talk about it and talk about some of their options. So first of all, um, just as an overview, I know we've covered it in other videos, but can you give a light overview of, of how prostate cancer metastasizes and um, when the occasions that we do have these, what we can do? The general characteristic of prostate cancer is that it will, um, if it spreads, it'll almost always go to either lymph nodes or to the bones. As bad as that is, it's relatively good because uh, bones and lymph nodes are very tolerant of uh, prostate cancer existing and they can coexist for a long time. If the disease spreads to other critical organs, particularly the liver, the liver is less tolerant and it's a much more serious development. Thankfully, as you mentioned, it is much, much less common. And if it occurs, it tends to occur uh, when prostate cancer has been metastatic for a long time and people have been through a lot of treatments. So it's something that will tend to show up later in the natural history of what we call prostate cancer. And I think the same thing can be said for spots on the lungs, that they are also very uncommon. And uh, if lung metastasis uh, uh, occur, that certainly that's a uh, not a good sign, just as you know, liver metastasis is not a good sign relative to just having bone or lymph node metastasis. Lung metastasis uh, can be a problem, although I think the lungs are a little more tolerant of spots than the than the liver tends to be. So we have systemic therapies in prostate cancer, which is you know treatments that circulate through our blood. So. How effective are systemic therapies such as hormone therapy or chemotherapy on a spot in the lung or the liver? They can be very effective. The problem with liver metastasis, if we're looking at them in the context of lung versus liver metastasis, liver metastasis are much more serious than lung metastasis. I'd say they probably both occur equally commonly. They're relatively rare, but um, I'm not really sure that one is more common than the other. But the systemic therapies, are uh, effective in both of them, but the trouble is that uh, liver metastasis in particular will tend to show up after people have already been on hormone therapy and then the disease is starting to progress. People are becoming uh, resistant to the hormone therapy. Hormone therapy can be effective for someone that had a liver metastasis at the get-go. We don't, that's not usually when we see liver metastasis. We usually see them after people have been on hormone therapy for a while and then the disease has started to progress and then down the line, uh, something shows up in the liver. So what about spot radiation? You know, we have these beam radiations that come in and can target a specific spot. So how effective are they on the lungs or the liver and would it cause too much damage? Like, is it really safe? So spot radiation can be effective for either lung or liver metastasis. Uh, the doctors that treat primary lung cancer practice this sort of skill and are familiar with how to treat spots on the lung or around the lung and what they're capable of and what they're not capable of. Treating spots in the liver is a little less common, but uh, it can be done. I think that you want to probably go to an academic center if you're thinking of something along those lines. Uh, the liver is more sensitive to the radiation therapy, and it has to be done properly, and it's probably only an opportunity for people to have one or two small spots. They, if people have more extensive liver disease, then uh, radiating the liver is not going to be a very practical option. So another treatment that I've heard of specifically for liver is surspheres. And so what is that? It's uh, an interesting name, and I think when people Google it, they, it's, I think there's treatments in other diseases, but for specifically for prostate and liver, what does that do? So it's a form of injected radiation. We're getting familiar with these sorts of things like Zofia Figo and lutetium where you can inject radiation and it'll go to a specific area. The surfsphere is a form of radiation that is injected right into the hepatic artery and it was developed for the treatment of colon cancer. Colon cancers tend to spread to the liver very commonly and it's uh, been shown in relatively small studies, some of which we participated in, that using a treatment for colon cancer called serospheres can be effective for men that have prostate cancer that is metastasized to the liver. This is something to consider when there are too many spots uh, that uh, spot radiation or, or beam radiation would not be appropriate. What are the side effects of serospheres and then on, are there any sort of panels or anything with the blood that need to be checked? Because I know with some treatments, you know, we need to make sure that the bones are strong or, you know, is there anything that patients need to do in order to be able to tolerate the drug? The treatment is usually administered one half of the liver at a time, and it, the um, 
uh, there's a certain maximum quantity of cancer that can be safely treated, and then uh, liver function has to uh, show an adequate reserve that's determined with the liver panels and uh, typical blood tests. It is an art, and uh, this is not something that you want to pursue with a doctor who hasn't been administering this to other patients. I would not be qualified to administer surspheres. I, I would be referring to a physician who knows how to do this and has done this in uh, multiple patients. It doesn't have to all be per prostate cancer patients, but the principles are the same with colon cancer, prostate cancer, and uh, other cancers. What type of doctor would be a doctor who could administer this? An interventional radiologists would probably be the um, the specialty that you'd be looking for. What are the best scans to determine, you know, as prostate cancer metastasizes and it's going, maybe it, it goes throughout the body, will a PSMA PET scan or any other type of scan pick up any spots that may have gone to the lung or the liver? Well, PSMA PET scan will work throughout the body. So that's a probably should be considered the standard scan these days for prostate cancer. You can get a little more refinement with an MRI of the liver. So if the PSMA PET scan picks something up, it's suspicious or inconclusive, then you can go to the next level and confirm that there is indeed an abnormality. And sometimes it may even be necessary to do a CT-directed needle biopsy to confirm that it really is prostate cancer. Uh, that would be an appropriate uh, methodology in someone that's uh, you know, has earlier stage prostate cancer and they think they see something in the liver. PSMA PET scans are good, but they're not perfect. And you can also light up other types of cancers and non-malignant things uh, with PSMA. And so you can't just assume just if a PSMA PET scan shows a spot on the liver that it is prostate cancer, some further investigations may be necessary to confirm that. So we've been talking about specific treatments for liver metastasis, but are there any specific treatments for lung metastasis? So we don't have an injectable form of radiation other than what people are already familiar with, like lutetium-177. But one thing that has become clear over the last 25, 30 years that I've been treating prostate cancer is that uh, spots on the lung, met metastatic lesions in the lung, do not have the worsened prognosis that liver metastasis have. Uh, before we had uh, Taxotair, which we started using around the year, probably 1998, the advent of liver metastasis really kind of meant game over. We didn't have any effective treatments. Uh, radiation back then wasn't adequate. We didn't have surspheres, And uh, it, it was usually occurring in people that were already resistant to Lupron. The development of lung metastasis did not, has never shown the same dire implications. In fact, it seems in men that have lung metastasis that these are much more amenable to systemic therapy and that people get much longer remissions. And the, uh, the possibility of spots showing up in other parts of the body is less common. It grows more slowly. It's hard to argue that any metastatic disease is a good thing. But when I come across patients that have lung metastasis, it seems like we can expect much more longevity, better outcomes, better responsiveness to therapy. And I'm not sure I've seen this published anywhere, but this is just a pattern that I've seen over the years that uh, people with lung metastasis seem to have a better outlook than other people with metastasis who don't have lung metastasis. So at a baseline, almost everyone with prostate cancer has bone metastasis and, and usually lymph node metastasis if, if we're talking about advanced disease. But I've had a number of people that have showed up with isolated lung metastasis, no bone or no lymph node metastasis, and the initial thought is, wow, this is really terrible, who've had that spot radiated or surgically removed and have gone into permanent remission without any new spots showing up. So lung metastasis uh, seem, in many cases, to signal a less malignant variant of prostate cancer, not a more malignant one, which is what we would conclude with liver metastasis. So today we talked about prostate cancer that has metastasized either to the liver or to the lung. As you've heard Dr. Scholz say, there are treatments out there, so make sure that you research a specialist in those particular types of treatments. You know, maybe they've done a certain treatment in colon cancer or other things, but the bottom line is you want to find out how many cases they've done, you want to do your research, are they writing papers on it, what's their experience, talk to other patients and hear about their patient reviews, get into prostate cancer support groups so that you can hear about other people 
people um, and their experiences. And even prostate cancer forums online, like Health Unlocked, it's a great way to learn more about the physicians who are treating it and the treatment itself. If you would like more information, please visit our website, pcri.org. You can even talk to our helpline um, and submit your information there, and they can help you research as well. Please remember that you matter, you're not alone, and I hope you have a great week.